I'm Raquel from Auburn Career Center, and today I'm here with James to talk to him about his career. So what do you do for a career? Well, what I do is I work in the financial industry. So I, I run um, my business, and we have a team of six people. Um, so it's Team IBB, and IBB stands for I've Been Burned. Um, and w the story behind that is kind of um, we try to help people not get taken advantage of. Um, in our industry, which unfortunately is kind of commonplace. Uh, so that's just kind of our, our, our battle cry, so to speak, when we get up and go to work. So it seems like you would have a lot of different cases, but if yes. you were to describe a typical day for you, even though it may be different from day to day, what would you say you, is something you do routinely every day? Uh, so routine is super important, and even my book, it's, the title of it, it all starts with a plan. So. The one thing I will say if you're looking to get into our industry is you got to have a mapped out plan long term and short term and like a daily routine. However, you have to be completely okay when everything gets jumbled. So mm -hmm. when your 3 p.m. appointment moves to 9 a.m. and then you have a 9 a.m., but that 3 p.m. appointment's the most important appointment of the day, so you have to like somehow move the 9 a.m. to 11 and then. So you just you have to be able to, and it gets easier with time, mm -hmm. you know. So the 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 first day for me, I, I would suffocate under the pressure and the intensity of what I do now, and it's normal for me. So like anything, if you go back to kindergarten, mm -hmm. it was pretty intense, right? <laughs> but now you're like, oh, that's I can you know I can I put the square in the square <laughs> hole. I can you know that's green, that's red. I get it, you know. Mm -hmm. So just um, definitely you know the daily routine is I what I found is. I'm, once the day gets rolling, mm -hmm. once, you know, work starts, um, the best thing to do is just don't plan, don't, don't schedule, um, you know, like going to the gym, don't schedule like anything other than just, just, you gotta, you gotta get into work mode and just go. So the mornings for me, that's kind of my time to kind of prepare and so, uh, typical day for me, I get my son ready for daycare. That's the best part of my day. Um, see him and my wife off, and then I will immediately get into. Um, I'm a big um, advocate for continuing education, always getting better. So I will listen to my audiobook while I'll, you know, maybe I'll do like some, some, some stretching, working at like so, like having some type of exercise, but listen. So trying to get a mental mm -hmm. sweat and a physical <laughs> sweat, so to speak. Um, I'm a big fan of meditating and visualizing the day. And um, one thing too that it's it's um, been super helpful is like journaling. Mm -hmm. So literally just pen and paper, or you know, going old school um, and writing writing out kind of what I want to happen, what I'm feeling, because what's what's what happens is when like right now. Mm -hmm. You're trying, you're like, you got a million things going on behind the scenes. You're trying to focus <laughs> on me and you're trying to be like, all right, what is he saying? Where's he going with this, right? Yeah. So same thing with when you're running one-on-one -on -one meetings with clients. Um, and a lot of times, too, I'm working with the entire family or I'm dealing with, you know, business partners or married couples. Uh, so you got to kind of get all the, whatever's on your, weighing on you, you got to get it out, um, kind of hit the refresh button on life and... Um, that way, while you're working, you can be completely at work versus saying like, "Ah, oh, I didn't exercise. I need to exercise later." Or, you know, you know, when am I going to do my breathing exercises? And breathing exercises, it seems simple, um, but it, it helps you kind of. When when I was talking about the three p.m. move to nine, it, it's a lot easier when you have kind of just gotten into a relaxed state mm -hmm. for the intensity <laughs> that life's going to bring you. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of getting mentally prepared for what the day is going to bring. And um, so, but once meetings start, I try to, you know, it could be, you know, it could be a 30 minute meeting, mm -hmm. it could be a three hour meeting. It could be, you know, just kind of depends on first off, what's the, you know, when, when does the client need the solution? You know, is, is it yeah. something that, hey, um, they're going to retire in five years, so mm -hmm. we, you know, we're, we're going to spend. We're just kind of like taking little baby steps to then, or hey, they're retiring in five days. That 
changes the game of okay, well, we can't just we can't just take our time on this. This is like happening very quickly. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, the number one thing is is helping people. How I was talking about getting my thoughts, my feelings, my worries, my concerns, my stress, my guilt out mm -hmm. of my system. That's what I do when I'm working with other people. Is I need to know like, hey, this is a safe place. Your information is not going anywhere. This conversation stays between us. What do you really want out of life? What do you really want to accomplish? What are your dreams? What are your ambitions? And you know, so just um, that way they can get whatever's weighing on them out. Because I always say I'm not qualified to uh, eliminate stress and guilt in any other realm of people's lives. I'm not qualified. Not, not you know. So, but at least when it comes to to what people are coming to see me for. Mm -hmm. If I can take away whatever is stressing them out about it, and if I can take away whatever is making them feel guilty about, you know, maybe they're, you know, they're spending money on things thinking it's going to make them happy, but really it just kind of makes them feel guilty. Well, it's, I'm not here to tell you to not spend money. I'm not here to tell you what to spend it on. However, something's broken, and if if you, if you're if you can't go to bed at night because you're like, oh, like I need, you know, I'm, you're stressed out about something that has to do with what I can help you with. Mm -hmm. Now. If we can figure that out, get it on paper, and we can say, okay, in the next five years, here's what we're going to do to make sure that, that we eliminate the stress, eliminate the guilt, so you can be happy, you know? And um, so I try to, you know, a typical day is, what do you want to accomplish in the next five years? What do you want to accomplish in a five to 10 year window? And then what do you want to accomplish in the next 10 plus years? I'm one of the only people that would be like, let's talk about when you're 65. You know, let, let's, <laughs> let's talk about retirement, you know? So just, uh, um, again, I try to make it fun, but ultimately if I can take the majority of my day is working one-on-one -on -one with people and trying to identify what is truly stressing them out, what is truly uh, keeping them from, from accomplishing their goals. And then, um, you know, I, I like to say I'm a goalaholic. I'm like, let's set a goal. Let's get a goal. Let's, let's, let's achieve it. And then, you know, as soon as we achieve it, it's okay, what's next? And that's what I, truly what I love about what I do in my daily routine is first off, it's never the same ever and then secondly it is it's just a journey of set a goal hit a goal and then press repeat set a goal hit a goal set a goal hit a goal so um, yeah and then that's where depending on the day I could be working f you know from home you know maybe you you, know, you can do everything from on your phone now but uh, you could be you know, a typical day is going to at least be 10 hours at least. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started, I worked seven days a week and probably about 12 to 15 hour days. And I wish I was exaggerating. Um, <laughs> however, you know, if, if the intensity of what I do on a daily, that's why I'm saying like, like it's, you got to get that kumbaya in the morning <laughs> just to like get yourself in a good place because it is very, it's a very intense industry. It's a very cutthroat industry and uh, we need more good people in our industry for sure. We need we need we need kindness. We need we need people who genuinely care about the other side of the conversation. Um, but uh, you know, it, it, if you want to make it, you have to be willing to work every hour possible for the first five years, and then <laughs> then you can you know kind of start to you know kind of have a, a more regular schedule if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So. Yeah. So that was a very long-winded answer. So hopefully that <laughs> I was trying to cover every single thing possible. So, Absolutely. so stress management, not only ha, your yes, own, yes. but other people's stress, mm -hmm. is a really important skill in your job. Yes, that's very important. Quite obvious from what you've said. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what other skills? What do you others? Think you so, need in this so career? very. So, the ability to problem solve, because mm -hmm. ultimately, like I said, what that stress. Okay, we got. We have identified the problem. Hooray. You know, that's a lot of times that's very difficult to get people to really kind of get it out of get it out of what's really bothering them. So what it is is you have different you have to be able to work with every type of personality. I have clients that are, you know, teenagers. I have clients that are in their nineties and everywhere in between. So you have to be able to work with every personality, every, you know, age bracket. Uh, you have to be able to um, you know, I always say it's I get to get my nerd on. I get to I get to geek <laughs> out on the research and, and crunching the numbers and, and analyzing the situation because you know everybody has that magic number that they need to hit. And it's it's um 
it's how do I get what they have to create what they need? Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. like, um, and, and it just it's it's helping people identify the solution. It's, it's everybody talks about their problems. I'm more you know the number one skill you'll need to have is how do you solve that? Mm -hmm. And so the, there's the first thing: be able to problem solve. Second thing is being able to communicate it in English, like or in whatever <laughs> language they need to understand it in. Um, my in the beginning, my disadvantage was I knew nothing about my industry. I didn't have any back. I just couldn't find mm -hmm. a job out of college. To be honest, you know, yeah. it was kind of like embarrassing at first, but I'm more proud of it now. Um, but that was my, that's kind of like my my secret weapon, is I had to figure it out. You know, so I didn't. You know, like for example, in what you do, you know, there's there's a lot of industry lingo where you know, you could have a conversation with your team, and if it's it's specific to your specialty and your expertise. Mm -hmm. I could be sitting here thinking, I'm like, what the heck are they talking about? Like, <laughs> it, it sounds cool. It sounds fancy. You know, so that's where the ability to meet people, where, like right now, you are meeting me where I'm at. You know, mm -hmm. like, okay, this guy's like chugging coffee. Like, he's all <laughs> got energy everywhere. You know, so, but the number one thing is, is you have to take extremely complex things. Because mm -hmm. again, if we have it identified your problem, I've researched it and I crunched the numbers and I'm so excited. Because now I have the solution, the communication of the solution, you know, it, it, a lot of times too, it's not, you know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, mm -hmm. um, to where if I just, if I literally went by the textbook, by industry uh, terms, you would have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> so I have, I have the solution to your problem, and that's what you came to me for, however, we're, again, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't have lost so many opportunities because I would have been like, all right, James, stop talking like you're <laughs> talking to a, a, you know, a, someone else in your industry. Talk to someone like, they, talk to someone like they're a kindergartner. Mm -hmm. Not because you're disrespecting them, not because they're not smart. It's just if you can't communicate your solution and have a kindergartner, you know, I think uh, the, term, the, the actual quote is if, if the third grader can't understand it, then you don't know it yourself. So just making sure that you can communicate it in very easy to understand uh, language. Yeah. And that's the number one thing, is if I offer you a solution and it sounds cool, it sounds fancy, <laughs> you, might be, you'll, you may not understand it, but in the moment you're like, it seems right, sounds, sounds good. <laughs> However, in, in, in my world, I'm not in it to get you in a position. I don't want you to do business with me for now. I want you to do business with me forever. Does that make sense? So there's a huge, I'd rather take extra time. Again, going back to hopefully we have the time. It's not like all people will say, hey, I retired last month. What should I do? Well, maybe we should have talked five years ago. But um, the main thing is going to be that if, I, if you don't understand it, you will never f completely trust me and you'll mm -hmm. never completely be able to, you know, that stress is gonna come back, yeah. which is gonna ruin everything we've been working towards. So does that, does that help? <laughs> yeah. So um, there's probably about a million other things that you need to have, <laughs> um, but definitely the ability to communicate and uh, meet people where they're at is super important. So you seem to really enjoy this job a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The, um, I'm, again, I'm, I'm very fortunate to where, uh, you know, I, I, my communica I had a communications and English double major. Mm -hmm. I had a psychology and writing double minor. So literally working with words and letters, not numbers. <laughs> uh, and truth be told, uh, I'm great with numbers. I'm terrible with math. Yeah. When it, so like when I when when algebra came out when I hit algebra and now magically letters equal numbers and then numbers equal that's not my but if I'm great with numbers when they're still numbers you know so yeah. um, you know, it, it's it's something to where I just wanted to tr I mean a lot of people say well I just want to help people mm -hmm. it sounds cliche you know it sounds like well everybody says that well every everybody human beings at their core do want to help we want we want to matter we want to we want to help people. Mm -hmm. So 
again, you have to have an expertise. You have to have a specialty that um, to, to f truly help someone. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's just like having a generic background and whatever it is. If you're not the master of whatever it is, then you, it's going to be very hard to help people. You yeah. know, so, um, yeah, I, I, I hated my internship. I was, gonna, I was like, I'm going to let my licenses burn. I'm like, forget this. This is <laughs> nonsense. Um, however, um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't find a job. And, you know, that's one thing I will challenge, you know, everybody that watches is that you've got to build your resume. Super important. But the person, the human being is always more powerful than the paper. If I gave you your resume, I said, all right, who would win in a fight? I'm pretty sure you could tear that piece of paper up and, you know, y you would come out on top, you know. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's something that, uh, yeah, I, I just want to help people accomplish goals. And I want, I want to help people achieve the things that they didn't think were possible. And I want to go the extra mile that, again, when I'm talking about, like, a lot of people my, in my industry, what happens is it's, it's kind of acceptable to where if, if you if you say, all right, James, I'm gonna do business with you, and you know, you're gonna retire in 25 years, 30 years, again, you're not, you're like, whatever, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, so, but um, it's common to where I'll talk to people, and like, when's the last time you heard from your person, from, from the, the, the person that you've been working with? Well, never, you know, yeah. I had, but we signed the paperwork, and that was that, so, uh, you know, if you really care about people, and you're really following up with them. I mean, it's it's truly it is it's very stressful. Mm -hmm. It's very intense. It's very cutthroat. However, um, again, I, I get very excited to say, okay, you want to achieve something that everybody else said wasn't possible. I think we can find a way. So that, I think that's what excites me the most is just no matter what it takes, we're gonna get you to where you need to be. Would so. you say doing that and helping people? is the best part of what you do oh totally totally uh you know like last night i was i was working with a, a buddy of mine like he referred me to his parents and you know same conversation is you know well, what do you want to do you know the, and you know that there's just there's so much going on and it was just really cool he's like hey i called you know the, the other person that's helping me with my plan at work i never hear anything back mm -hmm. i was trying to make changes and we went online, there was no changes that were made, you know, so just kind of like, it's, I love coming in, I'm a big Batman nerd too, so I'd be like, <laughs> I could be the vigilante, you know, they just kind of like come in and um, yeah, just actually, when, when, peop when people are saying thank you, I couldn't have done this without you, granted they could, it's, it's possible, but if, you know, that, that feels good, and then too, when people call and say, hey, um, we haven't told our family, no one knows, but we're having a kid. We need to talk to you, or like, hey, uh, no one else knows, but you know, we're gonna start this business, or you know, or we're you know, just, I don't know. It, it's 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 something. It's that personal relationship, and the, that I don't know. It's just that the 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 the, this, the feeling of a job well well done, simply because that's what you should do. If that makes sense. So yeah. yeah. So on the other side of that, what is the worst part of your job? The worst part of my job. <laughs> Everything. No, just the, <laughs> the the worst part of my job is if you it, in my industry, it's 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 not commonplace to talk about money. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's kind of the hardest thing is, uh, especially early on. I'm talking about that first five years. I'm like, hey, I'm James. I can help you, and and like people just they find out what you do. And like friends, family, they find out what you do, and you're like, oh yeah, we, we should talk about it. And then they stop answering your calls. You know, like it's just magically they're unavailable anytime you're around. And it's like, you're like, hey man, I'm, I don't even talk about it. Like, I just wanna like hang out, you know? So, um, you know, it's in the beginning, it's, it's very, the worst part is um, nobody knows if you're gonna make it. Nobody knows if, like, well, does he know enough? Like mm -hmm. is I mean like because you're you're talking about people's livelihoods they're they're yeah. you know and uh, um, so again in the, in, that's the worst part in the beginning the best part now is that you know everything's where so people are like coming to me so it's different mm -hmm. um, but I mean you still have to deal with the human error you know it's in, there, there's the perfect world there's a textbook way to do things um, but circling back to it all starts with a plan. 
so at least you have some type of sanity when everything goes wrong because it will um, but, you know just you know dealing with other companies that they give us bad information and mm -hmm. then we're do, you know just I hate doing things twice three yeah. times <laughs> ten times so again it, it, the, the worst thing is is always going to be in the initial stages you you become less than human, which is weird. Um, you know, I, I would drive three hours to go, you know, I'd schedule an appointment with someone, drive three hours, on, you know, basically on, with, with gas, with money, I didn't really have to pay for, you know, so, and uh, um, knock on the door, and like, you know, you, the car's in the driveway, lights are on inside, TV's on, and of course the window's open, you hear, oh, no, it's that finance guy. Don't answer it. <laughs> and you're like, oh. What you know, like like I drove three hours to get here, you know. So just and uh, you know, it's it, those initial those initial days are the when I say they're the darkest, that's like the Batman, yeah. you know, like the, the darkest, you know. But you know, it's it's truly. I mean, it, it, it you gotta you gotta find um, the right leadership team, the right culture, the right company that's the best fit for you because it, it is very um, depressing in the beginning mm -hmm. when you know it's just. Like I'm still me. Like, I'm I'm still a nice guy, but you know everybody's running away from me. Um, yeah, I mean just the uh, yeah the worst part is just that there's there's so many things that you can't control, which uh, you just you kind of kind of got to roll with it. You know, you get punched in the face, you just bounce back and be like, all right, I'm gonna smile. I'm gonna keep smiling, keep keep moving. Um, but yeah, I, I really don't. If you again circling back to if you enjoy what you do. The worst parts, I mean, when I'm like, when I'm saying like, oh, the paperwork, oh, you know, I have to make three calls instead of one, you know, like, that's petty stuff. Like, that's yeah. just, that is not real problems, they're not real, you know, things. So just uh, those beginning years are just tough. Anybody <laughs> looking to get in, like, I'm with you, I've been there. Mm -hmm. You can do it, but I mean, like, there's so many times that I'm like looking in the mirror, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Like, why am I putting myself through this? But, um, you know, it's, it's it's like anything. Like right now, you've made you're making an investment in what you're gonna do. In it, like anything, it's always tough. It's stressful. It's turmoil in the beginning, but. So my question to you is, five year if you are working diligently at something and becoming an expert at expert at it, will you be in a much happier, better off place five and after five years of doing that no matter what you're doing for sure for sure okay <laughs> cool so that's it, it get like i said i'm not trying to doom and gloom <laughs> but yeah the worst part if i haven't said it enough is is people do not anticipate how insanely difficult and how they're go how they will be treated by other people does that make sense yeah so well, the beginning is always tough yes. when you're starting new things, <laughs> but it is good to know that yeah. you will get to a place where you're well-respected and you are very good at what Correct. you do, and you'll always be seeking to get better. Yes. So thank you for talking to us today. Oh, hey, no problem. It was Thanks for very having me. informational. All right. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us today.